Here we are at part two. We've ended our study of trig and you're finishing up your take home tests will be the end of our trig unit. Starting on day one when we introduced what is a radian and how do you change degrees to radians and radians to degrees. Look how far you've come. So we're going to dive back into the algebra and we'll start off with a topic that really doesn't relate to any other topic but I do want to cover it this year so I decided to throw it in now. Partial fractions is a skill again that will help you if you take calculus. If not, its logic will entertain you. Partial fractions is the name. What I want you to do is take an expression like this and decompose it. That means tear it apart we are going to write the partial fraction decomposition of this expression. So what in the world does that mean? All right, well first of all, I'm going to factor the bottom. All right, when I factor the bottom, I get this, x plus seven over, this factors into x minus three, x plus two. Now I'm going to set this up so that each of these factors appears in a denominator once and they are added together underneath of two unknowns. Say what? Here it is. Here we go. So notice this expression is unchanged here equals unknown over this factor plus another unknown over this frac this denominator this factor in the denominator so this pattern will be followed now i'm going to use my algebra to solve that so how do i simplify that with algebra well i'm going to multiply through by the least common denominator so i have x minus 3 x minus 3 times x plus 2. And I'm going to multiply that times each factor, each um, term throughout the equation. So notice when I multiply this one times this, these two cancel these two. These are in the numerator, this is in the denominator, and it leaves an x plus 7. When I multiply it times this term, the x minus 3 will cancel the x minus 3, but it will leave an a over top of, I mean, an a times an x plus 2. When I multiply this times b, the x plus 2's will cancel, leaving a b times this factor. So let's see if I wrote that out. I did. So notice just what I predicted has been written out and observed. All right, now we play the let game. Let's, 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 x can be, x is a variable, a and b are a constant, such we want to know what that number is, and that's the whole point, is to find a and b. So we can let x equal any number as long as it's the same in each position where x appears. So strategically, I'm going to let x equal minus 2. Observe why I chose that. We can say x equals 1,002, but it wouldn't simplify our work. Minus 2 plus 2 will zero out this term and cause us to find out what b is. Watch. So everywhere, let's let x equal minus 2. Everywhere there's an x, I put minus 2. Notice the a term zeroes out, and it leaves me 9 equals 5, negative 5b. I'm sorry, not 9. This is a minus 2. <laughs> minus 2. Let me move this. Minus 2 plus 7. So that gives me 5 equals a minus 5b. Divide by minus 5, and I get b equals minus 1. So when it comes to b, case closed. So now, Let's play the let game again. It's so fun. 
So let x equal minus 2 is our first game. Let us look here and see what would help us find B, uh, find A this time. We can find A by zero, cause letting X equal something that would zero out B. So I'm going to let X equal 3. Let X equal 3. When I do that, I'll notice this becomes 3 plus 7 equals A times 3 plus 2 plus B, we already know is minus 1, but to get rid of the term, simplify our work, 3 minus 3, so this zeroes out, and we have 10 equals 5a, or a equals 2. So with a equals 2 and b equals minus 1, I go back to my original expression, and I write it as a de uh, decomposed I'm going to decompose with partial fractions. I'm going to tear it apart and make it look like this. Now I know that A was, mm, which one was A? 2, 2, so I'm putting in a 2 for A. In fact, let me go all the way up here where I had my original problem. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use A which is, let me go back down and make sure. Yeah, A was 2. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to put a 2 in for A and that was over the X minus 3 plus and B was negative 1. So where there's a B I'm going to put a negative 1 over the factor X plus 2. These two are completely equivalent. And I've asked you to use, to write this using partial fractions. Tear it apart, decompose it using partial fractions. And the reason we do that, again, lies in the calculus. This is very easy to work with, doing certain things that you'll have to do where this is not. So. There are some other situations I want to show you about partial fractions, but not tonight. You had to watch two videos and work on your take-home tests and lots of other things from other classes, I'm sure. So that's all for me. Over and out.